Welcome back to Math Party, people. So up to this point, you may be wondering, hey, look, I've seen problems where I'm solving quadratic equations where, you know, I don't have a C term. I don't have, a, you know, just a number by itself. And when that happens, well, you can go ahead and get that zero by itself, factor out, zero pro property, cool. Then, well, there are times where you don't have any x squared terms. Well, if you don't have any x squared terms, that's just a linear equation. You can solve those. You've done that all day. Now, in this video, we're going to go ahead and tackle the question, what if you don't have a B term? You know how you have A x squared plus B x? You know, so having a term that's just x, what if you don't have those? How do you solve these? Well, remember, my party people, when you don't have these, you can go ahead and actually ignore the whole get a zero by itself rule. You can actually just straight up solve. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that in this video. We have plenty of examples, so stay until the end. These are so many different ways that this can appear. So let's go ahead and get started here with number one. We have p squared equals 144. So here's what we're going to do to solve this. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. p squared equals 144. And here's what we're going to do. Remember that, well, a lot of the time, solving equations is the art of working backwards. And so if I zoom in over here and I'm looking at p squared equals 144, what's the only thing stopping me from figuring out what p is? Because notice, you don't have that p, you know, we have a p squared term, but we don't have a p term. There's no factoring needed to be done. We can actually just solve this straight up by taking the square root of both sides. The opposite of squaring is square root. So we can go ahead and just say, hey, what's the square root of both sides? And boom, we're good. Because you cancel the square of a square root. So we have p equals what? Now this is where things get tricky, and here's what I want to teach you. When you're taking the square root of a positive number, remember that the result is positive and negative. Because remember, p equals positive 12, that works. 12 times 12, right over here, is 144. But at the same time, you have to include the negative version. You have to include the negative 12 simply because negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144. That will also work. And so we have to include the positive and negative result right there. And that's why A is the answer. So that will happen quite a bit here. You know, if you're looking at even x squared equals 4. My party people, look, we'll go ahead and write it out. But to solve this, we'll take the square root of both sides. And we just have to make sure that we include the positive and negative 2. Because remember, 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2, also 4. Both of them work. Both of them work. And that's why D is the answer. But I'm not here to show you these easy, easy, easy ones. I'm here to show you the tougher ones. So allow me to go ahead and just zoom on up. Let's go ahead and start with something like this, number 14. Again, I, I really am sincere when I say that I want to make sure you know how to handle every single type here. So notice again, we have n squared plus 10 equals 35. But notice that we don't have an n term. We have n squared, but we don't have a regular n term. So we don't have to factor here. We can actually go ahead and straight up solve. We're good. So I'm going to show you two ways to really look at this to give you the same answer. But I want to show you two ways to look at this. So here we have n squared plus 10 equals 35. So I'm going to write here. I'm going to do this the same exact way that I did it before. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that I have the n squared by itself and the regular old number on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides. And we have ourselves n squared, whoops, we have ourselves n squared equals positive 25. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly in our course, you're going to get access to recorded lessons. You're going to get access to guided practice just like this. Worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online. And lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way, when you take the test, there's no test anxiety. There's no pressure because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more. So take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. So to solve this, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take the square root of both sides and we have n equals plus or minus 5. Again, what that means is you have n equals 5, n equals negative 5. Both of those would work, and that would be a. But again, let me show you the other way to do this. I really want to show you the other way, and this involves your knowledge of a difference of squares. So let me rewrite it for you to show you what I mean. 
n squared plus 10 equals 35. Let's say you accidentally thought, hey coach, you told me, hey, let's get the zero by itself on the right side. Let's see what happens. So look, this is actually not that bad. You can still solve it this way. Subtract 35, subtract 35, cancels out on the right side. So we have n squared minus 25 equals zero. You recognize that? Take your second, take a second. Do you recognize that? n squared minus 25. Well, guess what? That's a difference of squares. That's a difference of squares. And so what that means by math party people is that we can actually factor n squared minus 25 into n plus five times n minus five. You should have gone over the video where I went over a difference of squares, how to factor that. And now you can go ahead and apply the zero product property, nice and easy. And you can say n equals five and n equals negative five. Because if you set n plus five equal to zero, you subtract five on both sides and you get n equals negative five. With n minus five equals zero, you'll add five on both sides, and we'll see, that's ugly handwriting, but you have n equals positive five. And so you'll see right there, you can still get the correct answer even if you don't do it that way by applying the difference of squares, just like that. Now let me go ahead and continue showing you some uh, different examples here. You know, if we wanted to go ahead and tackle, let's say, you know, any one of these really, we're good. Number 21, you have k squared plus six, equals 127 and like I said watch until the end because it gets even crazier than this so if you wanted to go ahead and subtract 6 on both sides you could to get k squared equals 121 you take the square root of both sides and you get yourself k equals positive or negative 11 booyah and that's how it works now I'm going to show you another example here that gets even crazier let's go ahead and go to number 44 let's go ahead and get in there yeah, these are gonna get even crazier. So let me go ahead and show you number 44. So here we have ourselves 4a squared plus 12 equals 93. Now remember my party people, what you can do is this. You want to get the a squared term by itself so you can take the square root and be done. So here's how you're gonna do that. I can go ahead here and say first, let me get that 12 out of the way. Let me move that 12. Let me get it out of the way. So what we have now is 4a squared equals 81. Okay, great. Now, what can we do? Well, what we can do now is we can go ahead and get rid of that 4. We can divide both sides by 4. Now, this may seem a little unorthodox to us because what we're going to write here is a squared equals 81 over 4. Notice how I didn't divide yet. I just wrote 81 over 4 because what I noticed is that, hey, look, if I take the square root of both sides, 81 is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, so why would I write it as a decimal? I'm good. I'm good. And so what we have right here, my party people, will be, cancels out, A equals the positive and negative version. The square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 4 is 2. Boom. So we have A equals positive and negative 9 over 2. And if you wanted to change that 9 over 2 into a mixed number, 2 goes into 9 four times. It's because 2 times 4 is 8. And then you have 1 left over to get to 9. So 4 and a half. Positive and negative 4 and a half would be the correct answer. And that would be right there in answer choice C. So again, my math party people, like you can have so many different things going on here. There's just a lot going on. And I can really appreciate, you know, all the hard work you've been putting in. You know, if I wanted to do something like, let's say, 49, I mean, that would work as well. You can go ahead, right over here, we can have 100, let me zoom in, we can have 100x squared plus 10 equals 46. First things first, let's get rid of that 10. Okay, sounds good. So we have 100x squared equals 36. Hey, 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 really quick before we continue, if you're watching this, you've likely have already been to one of my classes. And if you haven't been to one of my classes, remember to check that schedule. The link is right up there and in the description of this video. That way you can understand when my free classes are and my access program classes are. That way you can keep raising your score, knowing what topics we're doing and get the job you want. So again, click there or in the description to see when the classes are and join one for free. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's get back to the action. From there, 
hey, we can go ahead and divide both sides by 100. So we'll have ourselves uh, divide both sides by 100, right there and right there. And we can have ourselves right here, x squared equals 36 over 100. Now, could you simplify if you wanted to? Yeah, they're both divisible by four. So you can turn that into nine over, uh, nine over, or excuse me, they're both divisible by four, so you can get nine over 25 if you'd like to. If you wanted to simplify, you could, because what you'll get is nine over 25, which is still a perfect square, still a perfect square. So when you take that square root of both sides, you're still good. You're still good. You can take that square root of both sides without worrying much, you'll be fine. And so you'll have x equals plus or minus three over five. Booyah. And there's a, that's your correct answer. And you're absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Again, so many different ways that you can do this. I can try to find some more examples here that are different. I mean, yeah, I guess if you have your, a number in front of the a term, sure, I guess, but it really makes no difference. The idea is to get the a squared or x squared term by itself, then take the square root and you're done. So this is the last one I'll do. We can subtract five on both sides. That's gonna give us four a squared equals 64. And if you'd like to, well, we should, divide both sides by four, canceling out there. A squared equals 64 divided by four. That's actually gonna be 16. So that's a nice perfect square for us. And then from there, we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides, giving us A equals positive and negative four. And there we go. So again, the math part people like this, I know I went pretty quick here, but it's because if you got through the previous videos and worksheets and speed drills, you should be able to catch up and keep up with me here. And if you're not quite ready for this, go back. There are plenty of guided practice videos, worksheets and speed drills for you to make sure you get the hang of things before you keep moving forward. And so with that seven math party people, I got your back all day. I'm Coach Anderson, I wanna see you succeed. And so keep moving forward with those worksheets and speed drills and have yourself a good day. You've reached the end of polynomials and solving quadratic equations. So I really wanna see you keep making that progress and bring everything together so you can make your big day one to remember. I'm Coach Anderson and I'll see you next time. Let me know what you think. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.